All right, we are going to continue talking about probability. <laughs> it says in our previous notes, we use the rule probability of A and B equals the probability of A times the probability of B to determine whether or not events were independent of each other. We also investigated the idea of conditional probabilities such as the probability of A given B. And we know that that symbol means that the probability of A occurring given that B has already occurred. So let's investigate how conditional probabilities are related to independence. What does it mean when we say that events A and B are independent of each other? Well, it means that the occurrence or non-occurrence of one event does in no way, shape, or form can affect the occurrence or non-occurrence of the other event. So if that's true, will probability of B have any effect on probability of A? No. So if probability of A equals 0.20 and probability of B is 0.52, what is the probability of A given B? Well, the probability of A given B is just going to be the probability of A because if this does not affect this, then who cares? The probability of B isn't going to change the probability of A happening. So to summarize, what are the rules to deal with probabilities when blank, then one event occurs at a time? When more than one event occurs at a time? Well, if events A and B are independent, independent, meaning one does not have any effect on the other, then the probability of A and B equals the probability of A times the probability of B. And if your events are independent, the probability of A given B is just going to be the same as probability of A. But again, it's got to be independent. If your events are dependent, then your probability of A given B is the probability of A and B divided by the probability of B. So it says, if X and Y are independent and the probability of X is 0.55 and the probability of Y is 0.26, what is the probability of X given Y? Because these are independent, use your chart for a while. They're asking me to find the probability of X given Y. But for independence, the probability of x given y is just going to equal the probability of the first one, which in my case is 0.55. Okay, number two, it says if events a and b are, again, we're talking independent, and it gives me p of a equals 0.12, p of b given a is 0.6, and they want to know what is the probability of b, probability of b. Well, again, they gave me some information about probability of A given B, and I know my events are independent, so if I set that equation up, probability of A given B is equal to the probability of A. And if I um, plug... Oh, sorry, we switched this. Sorry, probability of B given A. Probability of B given A is going to be the same as the probability of B. Alright, so what I plug in there is they told me what the probability of B given A is, which is 0 0.6, and that has to equal the probability of B. So the probability of B is 0 0.6. 0 0.06. Sorry for having a 0. Alright, it says if events W and T are, again, were independent, and they give me the probability of W and the probability of T, what's the probability of W and T? Well, again, if we're talking about independent events, and I want the probability of A and B, and remember you can write and with that um, union symbol, I'm intersection symbol, sorry, so it says the probability of W and T is going to equal the probability of W times the probability of T. Well, the probability of W is 0 0.04. The probability of T is 0.14, which gives me a product of 0 0.056. Okay, so for 4, it says events F and G are not independent. So now we're down here. And it says if P of G equals 0.22 and P of F and G is 0.16, find P of F given G. So I'm down here. The probability 
of f given g will be the probability of f and g over the probability of g. So they see, they told me that they want me to find this. They told me that the probability of f and g is 0.16 and the probability of g is 0.22. So the probability of f given g is 0.16 divided by 0.22 and I get 0.7273. Okay, okay. All right. So for five, it says the probability of it being overcast, of it being overcast, and the probability of rain are not independent. If the probability of rain equals 0.3 and the probability of overcast and rain is 0.12, find the probability of overcast given that it's raining. These are not um, dependent, so, I mean independent, so we're down here. So I'm trying to find the probability of it being overcast, or probability of it being overcast given that it's raining. Well, that's going to be the probability of it being overcast and raining divided by the probability of it just raining. So if I do the probability of overcast and rain, that's 0.12. The probability that it's going to rain is 0.3. Type that in and you get 0.4. Okay, six. The probability of you... Good morning, everyone. Hold if on. If anyone's in the building, please... Okay, sorry about that. Alright, so uh, the probability of you completing your homework for this unit is 0.85 based on your progress so far this year. The probability of you getting an A on your next math test, given that you complete all of your homework for the unit, is 0.95. What is the probability that you get an A on your next math test and you complete all of your homework for this unit? So they want to know the probability that I will get an A on my next math test and and complete all of your homework. Okay, well, wait, what is the probability of getting an A and you complete all of your homework for this unit? Oh. Okay, so let's write down what we know. We know that the probability of me completing my homework on this unit is 0.85. We know that the probability of my of getting an A given that I've completed all my homework is 0.95. So the probability that uh, let's see what do I want to set up here? Okay, these, these events are not independent. They are dependent. Okay, so we've got to use this one, which says the probability of A given B is equal to the probability, now well, let's use our language, what we're talking about. So the probability of getting an A given that you completed your homework will be the probability of you getting an A and completing your homework divided by the probability of you completing your homework. So I told me this, the probability that I get an A given that I completed all my homework is 0.95. I want to know the probability of A and my homework, getting an A and completing my homework, divided by the probability of me completing my homework, which is 0.85. So, to get the probability of getting an A and completing my homework alone, I'm going to multiply by 0.85, and I get 0 0.8075 equals the probability of getting an A and completing my homework. Okay? Alright, 
So if we look at this one, it says, tell whether the situation describes independent events, then answer the question. Two urns both contain yellow balls and green balls. Urn one contains four yellow and six green. Urn two contains five yellow and three green. A ball is drawn from each urn. What is the probability that both balls are yellow? This is independent because you're pulling them out of two separate urns. So what you pull out of the first urn in no way will affect what pulls out of the second one. So I want the probability of pulling a yellow followed by a yellow. Since they're independent, you take your probability of the first one being a yellow. Well, in the first urn, there's four yellows out of ten times the second one being yellow, there's five yellows out of eight in the second urn, which gives me 20 over 80, which reduces down to one fourth. All right, so for eight, it says, tell whether the situation describes independent events or dependent events, then answer the question. The names of seven girls and five boys on a committee are put in a hat. Two names of students are drawn to lead the committee. What is the probability that both names drawn will be boys' names. Okay, these are dependent because whatever you pick first is going to change what comes out second. Okay, so the probability that I pull a boy, then a boy. The probability of the first name coming out a boy is there's a total of five out of 12 kids total. The second one being a boy, if the first one's a boy, there's only going to be four names left in the hat that are boys. And since I did not put the name back, there's not 12 names in there anymore. There's only 11. That's going to be 20 over 132, which is 5 over 33. 9 says, you randomly draw letter tiles from a bag containing the letters from the word Pennsylvania. Find the probability that you draw an N from the bag, and then, without replacing the first N, you draw another N, N, which means these are dependent because you did not replace the N before you drew the next one. So they're dependent, so the probability of drawing an N and then another N. The first time you draw, there are 1, 2, 3 Ns out of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 letters all together times you didn't put the end back so now there's only two ends left possible and there's only 11 tiles left in the bag that gives me 6 over 132 which is 1 over 22 alright so next we're going to talk about Venn diagrams, okay? We can use a Venn diagram to find probabilities of events that overlap. Remember we call these um, joint events which are not mutually exclusive. So example one says the probability that a junior takes Algebra 2 is 0.55. The probability that a junior is taking Environmental Science is 0.24. The probability that a junior is taking both Algebra 2 and Environmental Science is 0.13. So A says, how do we know these events are not mutually exclusive? Well, because just because you're taking Algebra doesn't mean you couldn't also be taking Environmental Science. Those could both happen at the same time, which means the events are not mutually exclusive. And it says, how can a Venn diagram be created to represent these events? One says, draw a rectangle to represent all juniors. So you see my rectangle at the bottom. Okay, done. Draw a circle for the event, juniors taking algebra. So I drew a circle and I put A for algebra. Draw a smaller circle for the event, juniors taking environmental science. It doesn't necessarily have to be smaller. These circles must overlap with the probability of whatever it is they're taking both, which would be 0.13. Okay, so what you're going to have here is if you're, if you're just taking algebra, that means you're taking algebra and you're not taking environmental science. If you're taking environmental science but not algebra, that means you're not taking algebra and you are taking environmental science. 
If you're in the middle, that means you're taking algebra and environmental science. And if you're out in the rectangle, that means you're not taking algebra and you're not taking environmental science. So you're not taking either one. So what you start with always is this one right here, the probability that they have in common, which they told me is 0.13%. So that's got to go in the middle, okay? Now, the ones that are, it says that the probability that a junior takes Algebra 2 is 0.55. Well, yes, except for these 0.13 are in both, so you have to take that off which leaves the kids taking algebra but not environmental science is 0.42. We're going to do the same thing with science, okay? If the uh, probability that the junior is taking environmental science is 0.24, normally we'd put 0.24 here, but I got to take off the 0.13 that's in both, and that gives me 0.11. And then to get the kids that aren't taking any algebra or environmental science, you're going to take whatever is left. All of these have to add up to 1. So if I take 1 minus 0.42 minus 0.13 minus 0.11, I get 0.34. So there's 0.34 chance that you won't take either algebra or environmental science. Okay? So that's how you set up your Venn diagram. So we overlapped, we labeled those parts, we've got our, it says how do we find probability of A and not E, we subtract it, right, from the total. Yes. And it says if you get, if you add up all of the probabilities in the diagram, what should you get? One, why? Because all the juniors are represented, so everything has to add up to one. All right, so let's try and make one on our own here. It says there are 1,240 students that attend Northwest High School. Of, out of those 1,240 students, 744 students have a dog as a pet, 682 have a cat as a pet, and 434 have both a dog and a cat as a pet. Ten, how can you tell that this information can be represented with a Venn diagram? because they are not um, independent. You can have a dog and a cat at the same time. So when you don't have independence, or when you don't have, when you have dependence, you should use a, a Venn diagram. Okay, so what we're gonna start with is, and this, this would be, we own a dog and we don't own a cat. This would be, we don't own a dog and we own a cat. This would be we own a dog and a cat. And this outside would be no dog and no cat. So to figure out these, it, again, you, they want percentages. So what you have to do is you have to figure out the, 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 the excuse me, the numbers first here. So it says there are 1,240 students that attend North West High School. Out of these 1,240 students, 744 have a dog, 682 has a cat, 434 have both. So there's 434 here, which means if there's 744 with a dog and I take away 434, that's going to leave 310. And over here, um, what, who's our cats? We got 682 with the cat. Take away the 434 that also have a dog. Leaves 248. Okay, so now what they want though is they want percentages. Now they don't want these numbers, they want the percentages. All right, so what you do is you say, a different color here. The probability or for, for dog and cat, that's going to be 434 out of 1240, which comes out to 0.35. So in here is 0.35. For a dog and no cat, that's going to be 310 over 1240, which comes out to 0.25. So out here is going to be 0.25. Your no dog 
and a cat is going to be 248 out of 1240, which comes out to 0.2. And to get that outside number then, to get no dog and no cat, you're going to take 1 minus the 0.25 minus the 0.35 minus the 0.2, and that comes out to 0.2. So there's also a 0.2 out here. Or you could have went with the numbers and done 1240 minus 310 minus 248 minus 434, which would give me 248 over 1240, which comes out to 0.2. Okay? So we've got our Venn diagram all labeled, and now we can use that to answer questions. All right, so I copied my table again over here with all of my information in. It says, for A, what is the probability that a student has a dog but not a cat? Well, now that you went to all the trouble to make your Venn diagram, pretty much you just read it. Probability of a dog and no cat is going to be 0.25. The probability that a student has a cat but not a dog means no dog and a cat, which is over here, which is 0.20. C, the probability that a student has a dog and a cat, that's here in the center, is 0.35. The probability that a student has a dog or a cat. So now we're doing probability of dog or cat. So now remember, we've got to do the probability of, the, of, of having a dog, which we said was um, Oh, I went with my big numbers. It doesn't matter. Probability of, of having a dog would be the now just the dog, we don't want this, we want the back to the original. So I'm going to have to go back to my numbers, which I can't see on this page, but I wrote down from the other one. All right, so dogs, there were 744 out of 1240. Plus your cats, there were 682 out of 1240. But I had to subtract off the ones that they have in common, which is was the 434 out of 1240 which gives me 992 out of 1240, which gives me 0.8, okay? The probability that a student has a cat, again, this one, we can't, we can't use these numbers now because this is inaccurate since, um, oh, well, I guess we have it right here, right? and we have the other one right there, but anyway, the probability that a student has a cat was going to be this one right here. There was 682 out of 1240. It's a simple well, marginal um, probability because we're only taking one event at a time. So, and that comes out to 0.55. Again, I, you can kind of use that. The probability that a student has a dog, there were 744 kids out of 1240 which gives me 0.6. And then G, the probability that a kid does not have a dog and not have a cat. That's that outside, which is 0.20. Okay. All right, so it says 13. A movie company surveyed a thousand people. Uh, 229 people said they went to see the new movie on Friday. 256 said they went on Saturday. 24 said they saw it both nights. What is the probability that a person chosen at random saw the movie on Friday or Saturday? Well, these are not independent because you could go to the movie both on Friday night and on Saturday night. So let's make a circle for Friday circle for Saturday and um, let's see we have a thousand people so how many went to both 24 went to both 229 said they went on Friday take away the 24 that leaves me um, 
229 minus 24 is 205. Over here, Saturday, so 256 take away 24 would be 232. Yeah? Alright, actually I don't really need a Venn diagram for this because it's an OR problem. They want to know the probability of going on Friday or on Saturday. Well, that's going to be the probability of Friday plus the probability of Saturday minus the probability of both. So, probability of going on Friday was 229 out of 1,000. Probability on Saturday was 256 over 1,000. Minus both was 24 over 1,000, which gives me 461 over 1,000, which gives me 0.461. Alright, you try one, hit pause, come back when you're ready. And hopefully you got 0.74. It says, of 50 students going on a class trip, 35 students are athletes, 5 are left-handed. So the probability that you're an athlete is 35 out of 50. The probability that you're left-handed is... 5 out of 50. And the probability that you're an athlete and left-handed is 3 out of 50. Okay. So the probability that one of the students on the trip is an athlete or left-handed. So the probability of A or L would be the probability of A plus the probability of L minus the probability of both, which gives me 37 over 50, which gives me 0.74. Yeah. Hit pause. Come back when you're ready. And hopefully you got 0.38. It says if probability of A equals 0.43 and probability of B given A is 0.89, find probability of A and B. Um, the problem here is they really didn't tell you that the events were, whether they were independent or dependent, which was kind of a no-no. Um, but I'm assuming that they are, because I can see the answer, and the only way to get the answer is if they are dependent. So we use that rule, the probability, they gave me this, probability of B given A is probability of A and B over probability of A. So they want me to find this up here. They gave me this. Probability of B given A is 0.89. Probability of A and B, that's what I'm looking for. And divided by the probability of A is 0.43. So to get this alone, I'm going to multiply by 0.43. And I get the probability of A and B is Okay, try another one, hit pause, come back when you're ready. Hopefully you got 0 .09. It says, what is probability of A and B, given that the probability of A is 0.42, probability of B is 0.14, and probability of A or B is 0.47. Well, they want me, they're giving me this probability of A or B. So I know that the probability of A or B is equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A and B. So the probability of A is 0.42, the probability of B is 0.14 minus the probability of A and B is what I don't know. And they gave me the probability of A or B is 0.47. So I have 0.47 equals 0.56, combined like terms, minus the probability of A and B. Subtract 0.56. I get negative 0.09 equals negative probability of A and B. Divide by negative. And the probability of A and B. 
Yeah. Okay, try this one, and it pause. Come back when you're ready. And come on. Hopefully you got one fourth. Alright, so it says Sarah examines two events, M and C. The probability of M is 2 over 7. The probability of M and C is 1 14th. If M and C are independent, so they're telling me independent, which means the probability of M and C happening is the probability of M times the probability of C. So they gave me the probability of M and C. This is 1 14th equals, they gave me the probability of m is 2 sevenths times I'm supposed to find the probability of c. So to get that alone, I'm going to divide by 2 sevenths, and I get the probability of c is e change flip, and I get the probability of c equals 7 over 28, which reduces down to 1 fourth. One more, hit pause, come back when you're ready. Alright, so it says, I just did this one, didn't I? Oh, did I skip one? I did skip one, sorry. Alright, so um, we've got the probability of A and B equals the probability, since we know they're independent, probability of A times the probability of B. Well, they told me this is 0 0.06. They told me P of A is I don't know, times probability of B is 0.3. So to get probability of A alone, I'm going to divide by and I get the probability of A equals 0.2. Okay. Now one more, sorry. Hit pause, come back when you're ready. And hopefully you got 0.51. This one was kind of a little weird. Alright, they're telling me that the probability of the fly being wingless is 467 out of 1278. They're telling me that the pro uh, probability of having red eyes is 446 over 1278. And then they give me this thing that there are 200 flies that are wingless whose eyes are not red. So if they're wingless and not red is 210 then, and I know that there are 462 wingless I think 467 sorry um, if I take away the ones that are wingless and no red eyes that is 210. That's going to leave me 257, which means those have to be wingless with red eyes. Okay, so the probability of being wingless and red eyes is 257 out of 1278. So if they want me to find the probability of being wingless or red eyes, that's going to be the probability of wingless, which is 467 over 1278, plus red, which is 446 over 1278, minus wingless and red was 257 over 1278, which gives me 656 over 1278, which gives me 0. And we are at homework, so happy to <laughs>